Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own or do others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I'm not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say I'm a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here's your man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered the headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given from above, and therefore the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, if you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. They say that the best torturers are the most empathic of people knowing with exquisite sensitivity the nerve endings that will exert maximum stress. Pilate and the temple priests, they have each other's measure, exquisitely aware of each other's power and weakness. They are teasers and torturers to each other. Pilate believes he has the upper hand, and why wouldn't he? After all, a Roman governor, even of a low-grade colony like Judea, can draw on all the strength, authority, grandeur, law and order of the Empire of Rome. His is a high and a lonely destiny of great power. It's lonely at the top. Does Pilate dangle Jesus before the chief priests and religious authorities in a show of control, sure in his ultimate entitlement to give and to take away absolute power over others, even over their life and their death. I'm in charge here. I speak for the Emperor, not you. And yet Pilate is reluctant to be pulled into this distasteful quarrel. Who are they that cry crucify so insistently and so determinedly? Why, these are the priests and leaders who have been entrusted to keep alive the covenant relationship between God and God's own chosen people, to protect the observance of law, the very sign of God's steadfast love. Haven't they done their utmost to keep alive the religious life of God's own people in desperate circumstances such as these? Respectable and spiritual, and yet so enraged, so vexed to maddening, 
that they are unable to see, say, hear, think anything other than foreclosing this problem called Jesus. We're not thinking of ourselves, don't you see? We know that Pilate despises us. Don't trust him. If we let this Jesus get away with causing trouble, we are all finished. They will surely destroy us. We must protect the innocent. We have no choice. The path to destruction is paved with righteous intentions. Pilate, like the men of religion, has been disturbed by a claim to power he does not understand. His questions do not seem to bring him closer to Jesus, whose responses do not seem to bring Pilate the answers he craves. Pilate is locked into his own world, and truth, so close to him, yet eludes him. The priests and leaders will not enter HQ, but they keep themselves at a safe distance for fear of being contaminated. And Jesus is a still sure point in this restless toing and froing, inside, then outside, now inside again, and then back out he goes. Pilate goes back and forth as he with others also tries to put an end to this. Nobody wants to touch this problem called Jesus, certainly not Pilate. But now the temple authorities, they've sprung their trap and tipped the balance of power in their favour. The crowd know what matters most to Pilate. If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Good Father, we want to do the right thing, but are losing our way and don't know what to do. Come to us today and find us. Bring us home. Amen.